Hello and welcome to the Imaging Wire show. My name is Brian Casey and I'm managing editor of the Imaging Wire. We've got a great episode for you today. Our topic is expanding advanced CT imaging and our guest is Olivia Egan. She is director CT product marketing at Siemens Health and Ears. Olivia, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Brian. It's a pleasure to be here. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your role at Siemens Health and Ears? Uh, well, originally I trained as a CT radiographer, as a radiographer technologist, as you call them here in the US. And I worked for many years, almost 20, in one of London's teaching hospitals in the National Health Service before moving across to industry and joining Siemens Health and Ears in the UK. And then about four and a half years ago now, Brian, I joined the headquarters of Siemens Health and Ears here in the US um, as a in the role of a product manager, and I'm now the director of our Somaton portfolio. So our conventional CT scanners, excluding photo counting, and within that, I also look after our dual source scanners. All right, very good. So our topic is expanding advanced CT imaging, and one of the most advanced forms of CT is dual source imaging, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Can you tell us a little bit about dual source CT, what exactly it is, and, and a little bit of the history behind it? Of course. Um, I think, you know, dual source goes back to the early 2000s, Brian, and the CT slice wars, really driven about the desire for people wanting to scan cardiac anatomy and the coronary arteries better. So it really was the driver for much of the CT technology advances. And over the course of the year, scanners improved and we went from single source, four slice to 64 slice CTs, all of which offered better temporal resolution um, for cardiac scanning in the region of about 165 milliseconds. And with single source scanners, the cardiac image equality wasn't bad, but to truly get motion free cardiac imaging, we needed the patient to have lower heart rates, you know, typically in the region of less than 65 beats per minute, which often meant using beta blockers to slow the heart rate down. So at the time, Siemens and the health engineers looked at how could we better image cardiac anatomy. And when we looked at the key fundamentals of cardiac CT imaging, which was namely fast temporal resolution to freeze fast moving structures like the coronary arteries um, and getting excellent spatial resolution to be able to see even the small stenosis, we wanted to aim to be able to perform a cardiac CT, which could be done at any heart rate without the need for beta blockers um, and to get that temporal resolution, get that spatial resolution. And so unlike other vendors who chose to go wider with their detectors to get that single beat cardiac, Siemens chose to go down the dual source CT technology route. Okay. Now, when we're, we're talking about sources, we're talking about the actual x-ray tube source that's sending the, the x-rays through the patient, correct? We are indeed. We are. Okay. Yes. Now, can you talk a little bit about uh, making the leap from single source to dual source? So, so apparently Siemens basically added another X-ray source to the to the rotation mechanism around the patient. Indeed. So, most as you say, most CT scanners generally have a single X-ray tube and a single detector. Um, like many of the CT scanners within our own portfolio and every other vendor on the market. However, with dual source technology, we have two X-ray tubes and two detectors, which means we can have dedicated scan modes to deliver better performance, better speed, better power and spectral imaging. So with dual source, you can set both of those X-ray tubes at the same KV levels to make the system go faster. Think of it a bit like a camera shutter speed. Um, and when those two X-ray tubes are at the same energies, it means we can scan in a high pitch spiral mode to reduce motion. And we can also have more power to scan larger patients without compromising image quality. But with the two tubes, we can also set them at different KV energies so we can exploit spectral imaging um, with high spectral separation. Hmm. So as the scanner is rotating around the patient, it's acquiring two sets of data at the same time, and those can then be... Uh you know, post-process into a single image. Indeed. With single source, that X-ray tube needs to rotate a half a degree rotation, so 180 degrees to get the image. But with dual source, because you've got those two tubes, they just need to both rotate a quarter of a degree. So it means you get that faster scan speeds, that faster native temporal resolution. 
Mm. And and when was the first uh, dual source scanner launched? That was by Siemens. We launched the first dual source, the Summerton Definition dual source, back in 2005, Brian. And from the very beginning, dual source really was a, both a disruptor and a technology differentiator. Um, that speed of that first dual source system enabled the first motion free cardiac CT at high heart rates without beta blockers. And it allowed, you know, dual energy imaging in just one acquisition. We then went on to the next generation, which was the definition flash in 2007. This allowed us to deliver sub millisievert cardiac imaging. And then we had our third generation, the Somaton Force in 2013 and the Somaton Drive in 2016. So further helping us push the boundaries of clinical capabilities, offering that high resolution stent imaging, high power at every KV, dual energy at dose, no dose penalties, and you know, delivering with the Somaton Force industry fastest native temporal resolution with 66 milliseconds. Mm. So this is a this is a pretty mature technology then. Indeed it is, yes, Brian. Yeah. And so lately the last few years, Siemens has launched photon counting CT, and that's a different animal entirely, correct? Indeed, indeed. So dual source offered new possibilities in both acquisition speed and practical ability to move beyond that traditional morphological view, of, you know, with dual energy and spectral imaging. Um, and so when Siemens Health and Nears introduced the world's first photon counting CT, the Neotom Alpha, back in 2021, photon counting CT redefined what's possible with CT imaging by expanding beyond the limits of conventional detector material. So photon counting CT is fundamentally a, a, a change in the detector technology. In fact, it redefines detector technology. And so, you know, every CT scanner in the market, even within the rest of our portfolio, falls into what we call conventional energy integrating detectors. These work on the principle of X-ray scintillation, which means that when an X-ray hits the detector, it generates a light signal that's converted that into an electronic signal. So the detectors are designed with that light in mind. This includes the need for, you know, light reflecting sector um, between the pixels. And while a low energy X-ray generates less light than a high energy X-ray, the light difference is lost due to the time it takes for the generation and the measurement of that light. And so even the fastest scintillating detectors on the market are ultra fast ceramic detector material. You know, we don't can't always capture that light impulse. And so we measure light from many X-rays together in an energy weighted cumulative signal. But with photon counting detectors, you know, it, they don't require the intermediate step of generating light because it's a direct conversion of those X-rays to an electric signal, which we use to create the image. Um, and there's also that energy dependence of photon counting detectors, which X-ray impacts upon. So, you know, low energy X-rays produce a small amount of charge and high energy X-rays and um, more charge. But the difference really with photon counting is that with the elimination of that intermediate step of the gen you know, conversion, we can measure every individual X-ray energy. And this allows us to have spectral information without any dedicated scan modes or any technology. And what that really translates to is the significant gains in spatial resolution, image contrast, the reduction of noise, without, while also having the intrinsic spectral capability, including dual energy applications. And so what we did when we introduced the Neotom Alpha is we chose to pair the photon counting CT detector technology with the benefits of dual source technology. So in fact, we launched the Alpha as a dual source photon counting system. So combining the best approaches to maximize speed and performance and clinical capabilities. Mm, that's amazing. Now, um, if you don't have a photon counting CT, let's, let's double back to just the, the conventional uh, dual source uh, energy integrating detectors. What sort of applications are these systems best for at present? And, and maybe how does that compare to, to Photon County? Absolutely. And, you know, for many of our customers, dual source technology is, is still the system of choice. Um, you know, high quality imaging is needed across a wide variety of clinical conditions. For example, cardiovascular imaging, oncology, early detection, trauma, pediatric imaging. Often in imaging, you never know who the patient's going to be, whether they can 
or their breath? Are they going to be able to be cooperative? Can they understand what they need to do? Um, what if they have underlying comorbidities or complex cardiac histories or even are just in extreme pain? If they're a trauma patient, they might be uncooperative, may not lie still. So you want to know that you ha can handle all patients all of the time. And that's really what dual source technology offers our users. With dual source, you get the ability to scan patients with high or irregular heart rates, patients with limited breath hold capabilities who require fast scans. It allows us to freeze moving structures like the coronary arteries and scan any patient of any heart rate or free breathing without motion artifacts. And so it means we can also perform advanced structural heart imaging on patients, no matter how complex they are. It also means we can scan pediatric patients without sedation. Um, with dual source, we also can achieve high power even at low KV. And that means we can have lower radiation doses even in larger patients. It allows us to gain that morphological and functional imaging at high speed in one scan without additional radiation dose. So it really has many applications, Brian, in clinical um, field. Now, what, what kind of facilities are typically buying dual source CT? Do these tend to be, you know, more uh, high, uh, you know, academic centers? Or how, how far out into the market has this technology filtered? Yeah, and, you know, traditionally and typically dual source has been the domain of the large academic sites, research sites, university hospitals, those large hospital networks, um, pediatric hospitals. In fact, 20 out of 20 top U.S. hospitals um, according to the 2023 US News um, and World Report have dual source CT technologies installed. But with recent changes in chest pain guidelines, the growth of structural heart disease, even the shift in these post pandemic times where we wanna keep patients closer to their communities, more and more healthcare facilities from the mid-sized hospitals to outpatient imaging centers and even you know beyond are desiring dual source technology, Brian. So you've got a new product launch that's that's coming up that's going to meet some of these demands. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, so it really comes to you know looking at what our customers need. And Siemens is, you know, really aims as a company to to listen to customers and help them um, meet their patient's population and patient's need. And with cardiology and cardiac procedures growing um, and increasing, um, recent combined, you know, recent changes in chest pain guidelines mandating that cardiac CT is a frontline test in patients with stable chest pain and the rising increase in structural heart disease, it means the demand for cardiovascular patient care has really grown. But it's also recognized that major access disparities for ca advanced cardiovascular care exist within the US alone. And as it stands now, outcomes for adverse cardiac events are really sadly determined by the patient zip code. In fact, a recent Medicare analysis showed that while 96% of cardiac CTs were performed in urban areas, yet one in five Americans lived in Euro um, America. And so, as I say, you know, we're focused on supporting our customers, to provide innovation that matters and to help make a difference. And we want to help customers reduce that barrier to healthcare, to help reduce the challenges faced by patients with access to care. And so the system that we're introducing is going to help expand high quality CT imaging to all outlying rural locations to help customers deliver that timely and accurate cardiovascular imaging and routine imaging help reduce the delays in diagnosis, detection and management of all conditions. And so we want to be able to do that in a way that supports the users to make sure that they are confident in how they operate the system. And so we're very excited that we will be launching the Somaton Pro Pulse and the next evolution of Jaws or CT at RSNA. And with this system, we're going to be combining the power and the speed of Jaws source technology, Brian, with advanced embedded artificial intelligence to deliver workflow efficiencies in a unique offering which makes high-end technology more accessible to all because this dual source system will be air cooled like our existing dual source portfolio which are water cooled it's going to require less siting it's going to offer dual source technology at the total cost of ownership of a single source ct brine so you know, the Somaton Pro Pulse is going to unlock dual source for all. It's going to mean zip code is no longer a barrier. It's going to up, up the technology to far more, um, you know, healthcare providers. 
That's great. So how was Siemens able to develop an air-cooled system when all the other dual-source systems are water-cooled? So the Propulse has been designed to be our most efficient dual-source system. And, you know, traditionally, um, we've what we've looked at is our existing um, CT portfolio. And our, we've really redesigned our entire CT portfolio within Siemens over the last five to seven years. And it's, you know, looking, taking that design paradigm from other CT scanner families where we've built as much as possible directly into the gantry. Um, and so this gantry integrated design means it requires, you know, 30% less room space for installation. It's utilizing our powerful Athlon tubes which deliver great performance, so high power even at low KV, but enables us to have a lower service cost than um, you know, typically at the sur- a single source system. It's also the imaging chain, Brian, on the propulse. So the Athlon tube, that stellar detector, combined with the geometry improvement as a 70 centimeter core, it means the generator requirements are much less demanding than the existing dual source portfolio. Um, but we've done that without compromising on image quality and without compromising on, on the end result. And so as a result, it means that we have addressed all of the factors that play into total cost of ownership, the siting, the installation, the service costs. Um, and that's really where why we've been able to make dual source accessible to more people. So another one of the issues that radiology is facing right now is is the issue of workforce shortages. And imaging sites are being asked to do so much more with fewer people. How did Siemens address the workforce issue and workflow in the design of the system? Brian, you know, we recognize that our customers are faced by, you know, increasing workforce shortages, and we want to be able to support them. And so when we launched the Propulse for the first time on a dual source platform, we're introducing our intelligent workflow my exam companion. And this utilizes powerful embedded artificial intelligence to empower users of any experience level to perform more CT examinations with ease from the routine to the advanced to deliver consistency and standardization in the images. So my exam companion helps users um, every step of the way. Think of it as a GPS for CT, but it also supports our customer, our patients. And the mobile tablet workflow allows the technologist to do more by the patient's bedside, for example. And so it's much more patient focused. The scanner has a variety of patient focused features um, to enhance the patient experience within the CT scanner. And so the MyXAM companion and the mobile tablet workflow will allow concurrent activity during scan setup. The automation within the scanner user interface also means that the scanner operation is more simplified. More automation means less manual tasks for the user. And practically speaking, this translates into significant time savings. For example, during testing, we saw that, you know, over 70% of time savings in routine CT examination and in advanced procedures like cardiac, we saw about 62% of time savings. What it also means, though, is this, you know, using this embedded um, AI supports the user. Um, We took a number of technologists who've never performed a CT cardiac examination before, and thanks to my exam companion, 82% of them, Brian, were able to perform a high-quality cardiac CT the first time, which is really powerful particularly when you, we think about, you know, the target customer for who will be looking to potentially install the Somaton Pro Pulse to help with their cardiovascular imaging program. Mm, that's great. Now, the, the system is going to be launched uh, in mid-November, and uh, coming up uh, in a few weeks after that is RSNA, so I'm assuming that you will be highlighting Pro Pulse at uh, RSNA 2023? We absolutely will. The Propulse Gantry will be on the booth at RSNA along with our Neotom Alpha and obviously all of our um, CT technologies. We can talk to you about helping, you know, how our user interface helps, that automation that my exam companion show you examples. So we're really, really excited for this upcoming RSNA, Brian. All right, great. Well, uh, I look forward to seeing it. Uh, Liv Egan of Siemens Health and Ears, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Brian. All right, signing off for the Imaging Wire, my name is Brian Casey.